Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Nick and this is On Buddhism, a series of introductory video lectures on the topic of Buddhism. I'm here in the ancestral home at my mom's house and um, I'm outside and the weather is fantastic. It's nice and sunny and cool and spring has sprung here. And so while I was here, I thought that in the midst of bird song and leaves rustling, I would go into topics on the life of the Buddha. So some of us are familiar with the life of the Buddha. We might be familiar with it from such figures as the Dalai Lama and Thich Nhat Hanh and Pema Chodron. Uh, those are usually the most famous and well-known Buddhists in the West that most people know about um, and most people listen to if, they, if, if they're interested in Buddhism. But the life of the Buddha has a lot of important details and has a lot of important implications for our daily lives. Um, the life of the Buddha is by no means unique to him specifically. And so we're going to talk a little bit about um, that story and how we can pull it into our own lives to optimize our own daily life experience. So as you may know, the Buddha um, is actually not his name. It's a word that means the awakened one or the thus become one. Uh, it's, it's a title that's given to somebody who has reached enlightenment. So all people, all figures in all of history, uh, whenever they have reached enlightenment, they have earned the title, the Buddha. His real birth name was Siddhartha Gautama. Um, he was born just inside the borders of Nepal in the foothills of the Himalayas in 566 BC. Uh, he was born as part of a noble caste, the Kshatriyas. The Kshatriyas were uh, the second of the four castes of India, um, back whenever the caste system was um, more prevalent and more of a thing, um, just below the Brahmins. Uh, the Kshatriyas were warriors and nobles. So he was born um, very, very well off, and his father was very rich, and his family um, had everything they could ever want. Uh, he was very, very sheltered and very, very spoiled. Uh, he spent most of the early part of his life inside the walls of the palace without ever leaving. And that was because his father didn't want him to see the suffering of the world um, as a means of protecting him from evil and protecting him from, from grief and illness and death and everything. And on all trips that he ventured out outside of the castle with his family, his father had all the sick people and all the hungry people and all the poor people removed from the streets so that his son, Siddhartha, would never see them. Eventually, as, as it would with me, as I'm sure it would with you, this life gets terrible. <laughs> it gets unfulfilling. It gets to be stale and sterile. And it's not real and it doesn't have any bearing on our spiritual life. So eventually the Buddha gets unsatisfied with this and so as an adult he takes three trips out beyond the walls by himself um these three trips are very special by some accounts there's four trips but uh by this account there's three trips out that um are very special and on on the first trip the buddha encounters someone who has grown old so up to this point in his life his father has removed all the people who have grown old uh, from the streets so that he couldn't see them whenever he went outside the walls of the palace. This caused him to go back to his own room, his own room in the palace, and realize, oh no, I can get old. I won't always have the body that I have now. I won't always have... Um, the nimbleness and the spryness and the health that I that I have now and um, this was concerning to him this was very concerning to him so he went back out again and on this journey he saw a sick man a very very sick sick man by some accounts it was a leper but um, that tends to be a more Christianized motif and so there's a lot of debate on what this man was sick with but nonetheless he saw a sick man and again, this disturbed him. He, he realized, even if I am young and spry and I have my body, I could still get sick. 
and if I get sick, I could still, you know, suffer. This concerned him even more deeply. And on a third journey out, he saw a dead man. He saw a corpse. And it finally set in that he could die. Everybody in their own lives, in their own times, they have a moment where they encounter old age, sickness, and death. For some of us, it's very early, and for some of us, it's kind of late. And either way, no matter what, whenever we encounter illness, age, and death as children, as adults, whatever, um, it's concerning. It instills in us, and it instilled in Siddhartha, the impermanence of all things. And it instilled the existence of suffering and grief and, and illness and sadness and passing. And that can be a jarring and concerning experience. And so as many of us do, where we go and we seek spiritual um, solace, he goes to seek spiritual solace. Siddhartha leaves the palace for good after seeing the dead man and he he decides to meditate and he decides to join other teachers to meditate and become a homeless mendicant uh, living only off the alms of whoever passes by and his goal is to meditate and seek the spiritual cessation of suffering this is suffering that we're all entirely too aware of especially at a time like this during the coronavirus pandemic and so this story, like I said, is by no means unique to him in that we all have our moment uh, where we encounter death through the death of a family member, through the death of someone else that's close to us. And we all encounter illness, be it with ourselves or with someone that we're close with. And we all experience age. And what's very important about that story is not that he decided to do battle against aging, sickness, and dying. He instead tried to change his own reaction to it and change his own experience with it. He could have retreated from it. He had every, every single power to run away to, back to his palace and forget that it ever happened and just think about it as a bad dream. He had every ability to go and become a doctor in 566 BC and battle illness like like it was a war he had every ability to try and uh, anxiously and frantically do magic and do other things to try and fend off death but as we know from stories where that's happened and from reality that's not successful so what he instead did was he worked on his own relationship with those things and that's an important story. That's an important story and that's an important thing to remember in a time like this. We can't change the passage of time. We can't change age or illness or death. We can't change grief and we can't change sadness, but we can change our relationship with them, just as the Buddha did. And in doing so, the Buddha found spiritual solace and he found enlightenment. So, the moral, I guess, of that story, or the message behind that story, is not to is not to battle with suffering, is not to battle with endings, but to change your relationship with them and realize that endings and illness and grief are natural parts of life and they're necessary parts of life. But we as individuals have the power to change our own relationship with them. The Buddha did this through meditation and through breathing exercises and through plenty of exercises in um, asceticism and other things, but there are many options. And um, what's special is that the Buddha found what worked for him. He went through three teachers before he eventually sat under the Bodhi tree and reached enlightenment on his own. And we can do the same thing. Just because we're bouncing between jobs or hobbies or religions or philosophies doesn't mean that we are doomed to just kind of be floating around and not really fit in anywhere. It means that we can make our own way. And that's what the Buddha did. He made his own way. 
So that's an important lesson to take from uh, this part of the story. In the next video, we'll go on to the next part of the story um, involving his meditations. That concludes this part of the story. In the next video, we will go into um, stories involving his meditations, his enlightenment, and his first sermon. I hope you've enjoyed this and found some informative pieces to it and something that you can take home with you. I wish you all the best health and happiness. Thank you.